So we'll do a quick little walk around here and see where we're at with the rover right now. Uh, we've got the uh, axles off and uh, little we'll have to determine a little bit later as to whether or not I'm going to have to go ahead and get a rear differential upgrade and, and new axles. I know I have a, uh, apparently I've been told I have a Salisbury rear end, which Salisbury was uh, Dana. If you don't know that, that's where Dana started. Look it up, true statement. I just don't know exactly what I've got yet. I know that what we're doing is we're adding a lot more torque by putting a, a V8 302 small block Ford engine into uh, the Rover, which came with a two and a quarter liter four cylinder. And um, I live at the top of the mountain in Golden, Colorado, search and rescue paramedic, and it just wasn't getting the job done. We affectionately called our Rover the slow slow response vehicle. Um, there's been a lot of work done on the Rover, and what we'll do here is I'm just going to kind of make a quick little documentation of what you've got to be prepared for when you're getting into a project that's 50 years old. In 2013, this uh, Rover will be 50 years old, so um, I'll tell you that this project has been a lot of fun and we've really enjoyed it, but the key has been to have plenty of resources, and uh, I guess that partially means money, but as you can tell, I'm not exactly crawling on a creeper with a car jack right now. I'm doing a quick little lift. And what I mean by that is, if you take a look and take kind of a stock, at, even though we've done a lot of work on the front end, you can see a kind of a definitive change in the, the quality of the frame when we get to about the second row of seating, which would be about this area. We got into a lot of rust. So much so, this is a common low spot where there's not really good drains, and you can see we've been doing a lot of work to get strengthening going on in here, and a lot more cleanup today is in store for me. Um, most recently, what we've discovered is another location that is paper thin right up in here. And so I hit this with an air compressor yesterday, and that was just a, a pinhole size, and after hitting it with the air compressor, I'll be doing a little bit more uh, removal and strengthening today. Um, the back end is uh, not really a whole lot of work been done, but you will notice that as we look at this, the rear cross member is still in place. Lots of strengthening. We're rebuilding uh, shackle mounts, or rather strut mounts, uh, and then we've got the pieces to get the spacer back in play. Um, we went ahead and moved the brake uh, lever assembly for the parking brake back a quarter of an inch, and we did have to remove the rear cross member. I have a cross member from a Disco uh, our discovery uh, going in and that'll be coming in uh, next week. I already have it but we had to do a fabrication on it. The front end really took a lot of changes here. You'll notice one cross member is missing here also. We replaced that cross member with uh, a new front end and then you see the power steering mount that we've done work on. New engine mounts from advanced adapters. Some modifications have been done here to allow room for the front cross member to come through, rather excuse me, the front drive line to come through, and then an entirely new mount for what we've done for where the transmission will sit, yet to be drilled. As we get up in here, it's just you're just gonna hit lots of areas. We we had some spots that were really bad on the other side, so we went ahead and I pulled that off, uh, chopped that off last night, and uh, we're putting on a new plate here. And a really nice P38 uh, mounting assembly. Uh, you can tell what we've done here with respect to welding the bolt heads on. And then we just drilled holes in the frame, strengthened up with a stiffening plate, and uh, we're able to accomplish the same thing here. Sorry if I'm getting out of focus, but... Uh... So why we went to all this trouble in our shop that has been perpetually clean and unclean has been for this Ford 302 small block V8 that's going in. And we're actually getting ready to hopefully get the, the frame off to, to media blast and powder coat here this week. And I can start playing with this project. Um, once again, like I say, we have lots of toys in the shop and that's what's made it doable. Um, we also have, of course, our vice president of morale here. But um, a couple of accessory pieces that I won't need. We're going to turn that into an air compressor pump. And then I've got a new power steering, uh, P38 uh, pump, reservoir, and lines that will fit pretty much in this spot here, um, allowing us to enough room to not conflict with the steering box. Here's what's basically going to be going on. If you take a look at the, the length of this, and with my hand in here, I guess is a frame of reference. I mean, I can almost span the, ent 
you know, all but about six inches of the trans original transmission. And when you look at what's coming in here now, the size of the bell housing and everything is much different. It means that we have to do some fabrication uh, with a special little mount here to get this to work. And so we're looking at possibly mounting like so. But the advanced adapter piece that takes me from an NP435 out of an 89 Bronco, the bell housing that would accommodate the 302 engine, the original uh, transfer case, which is mounted to the two adapter pieces here. There's actually one, and then there's a second one that just gets you this upper lip uh, are what we're working with right now. So that's, that kind of fun's all going on. Uh, body panels are in great shape, but we have gone and taken all the glass out so that we can go ahead and get those off to, as soon as you start working on stuff, you of course end up making some blems on your paint. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do that. Uh, I highly recommend uh, changing your wiring. Uh, I'd rather not be putting that back in uh, and so we went with a painless wiring kit. All my new uh, seals and rubber. Um, I have another back at the garage. We'll be going with a lower profile, thinner, so, so that I have room for the uh, cooling of the radiator and everything on the rig. Uh, that's coming in too. And then, of course, we'll just do a little powder coating and sandblasting on the uh, fuel tank. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Basically, if I've still got time on this video, the point of this whole thing is that larger engine assembly and bell housing requires that you go three inches wider. If you look very closely here, we made a very careful incision, cut up and over, and then removed about a three inch section, and then pushed it over three inches, letting it lap behind. Now that left us with a three inch gap, so there's a three inch piece of metal that you see here, and then that little chunk of three inch went there. And I think we've done a fairly darn good job of getting that pretty. My foot wells were in kind of bad shape, so we went ahead and ordered some new foot wells from Rovers North. They're going to become your best friends. I also really like Rova Farm, R O V A H uh, Farm.com. And uh, I just think we've been lucky to have a really good shop, three paramedics who understand mechanics. I'm, I actually should take myself out of that equation. I'm learning on this process. And uh, certainly have had a lot of fun with it, but it has been a project and a half. And we look forward to what's going to be happening this month with putting it all back together.